Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Bright Torn, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 and the Royal Court Expansion. So, we're going to be starting out today's episode by doing these court decisions. See what three events we get this time. It does often seem to be most of these are negative, but sometimes we do get something good out of here. Uh, so, I'm hoping we get some good positive bonuses here. This is serious business. A frightful peasant strolls all too close before a guard steps between us. Oi! He backs off with a wink, laughing through scant teeth. Your lordness, I've come here from Rubnik with a matter of great important. <laughs> His eyebrows undulate. You see, King, our Fletcher has been carrying on with the Prior's sister cousin, and the old village is an uproar. And this since seven moons back, or were eight. He strokes his chin. Okay, so we could say, you don't say, please go on. We get the common touch, which will decrease vassal opinion, but increase popular opinion, and we'll, we'll gain some stress. We can instead go with this option, and the Duke here, which is our, our uh, steward, would uh, lose some opinion, and then the county would get the dispute settled, increasing growth in popular opinion. Could instead say, you are a fool, my fool, and then we'll turn that character into our court jester. Now, what's all the court jester do? The court grandeur change from month has increased by quite a bit, and a possibility for stress relieving events. Well, that's interesting. We can instead say, what, how did this man get in, anyone? Okay, so I think we might go with the... I was going to say that one. That, that increases the growth of development, so we won't go that. We'll go with this one. We'll lose some opinion with the Duke, because he's a little bit annoyed. That's all right. Next event is Contractual Compromise. This is... Okay, so this is that one Duke who uh, has Silesia. So he boldly steps forward and without pro providing any context, proceeds in a hushed tone. I have the ear of my fellow discontents, and I'm sure I can persuade them to back down in exchange for some contractual amendments. Though rumored to be in to be a fulcrum for traitors' desires of greater autonomy in Poland, surely this is a charge he would never publicly admit to. So this is the faction that he's in. He's basically probably willing to disband the faction, or yeah, just yeah, it looks like it would essentially disband it, and. Uh, would force all the other members of it to not be able to join a faction any longer. Uh, but we're not at all worried about this faction, so I'm not going to do anything like this, because I'm sure he's wanting something. But if we were to accept it, it would result in tax or levy obligations being reduced for every member of that Liberty faction. Say, so you are plotting against me, and then seize them. It's an act of tyranny, though. So that would reduce opinion. There's one way to, to arrest them, though, I suppose. But if we wanted to do a tyrannical way, there's other ways as well. But the other ways when you arrest him could result in the entire faction rising up. With, with this one, it doesn't seem that that's the case. It does decrease their opinion with you. Okay, well, that's interesting. You could instead say this and then forget the others, in which case we're basically doing a deal with him. And that's a 40% chance of being accepted. You could say, see sense, knavery will do you no good. It's a diplomacy challenge, only a 45% chance that will be successful. 54% chance he'll be outraged. That might go in our favor the way we want it to. Uh, you play a dangerous game, Duke. Uh, let's do this one. There's a small chance it'll work out, and if it doesn't, you know, if we get the 54% chance of it, it not working out, I'm actually okay with this faction rebelling. So let's go with this one, and we'll see what happens. And he's actually convinced, so we gained some prestige, and uh, he's now lo no longer able to join a faction. Now, is that every member? Okay, they actually lose 10 opinion with him, specifically, and the faction is disbanded. Uh, next event is un Unconventional Preacher. My liege, Countess Camellia's uh, voice is severe. I request that we launch an investigation about an infamous preacher in Krakow. You see, this is a preacher, well, that she's a woman. This is not in accordance with our faith. Count Christian interjects Camilla's speech by raising his hand and taking a step forward. My liege, while, while Camilla is correct in her assessment, that is the preacher's only flaw. Everything she teaches is in accordance with our faith. Okay. So we can say we need more people to spread the word of God. And then Krakow will get the preacher loved by the peasants. So it'll decrease the uh, control while increasing popular opinion and development growth. And then, of course, there's going to be some opinion bonuses and penalties here with the two count and the count and the countess. You say throw this false preacher into jail. We'll imprison her. Now that's the countess, it's her here. Okay, so this is our false preacher. I'm trying to click on her here. Okay. Seems like a good teacher to me. Good preacher. 
Uh, but yeah, you could throw her into to prison, and then you'll get that penalty. Or instead say, I wish to employ this preacher as my high almoner, and we'll lose some piety. We'll just go with this option here. We need more people to spread the word of God. It does decrease control in the uh, uh, the capital, but you know, you're already getting a bonus to control anyway. And so more than anything, you're just getting the, uh, the development bonuses and, and the popular opinion. All right, so we finish those up. Nothing really exciting there. Uh, but we did get rid of that faction, so I suppose that's... I don't know. I, I would have been okay with them rebelling. All right, so I believe we are ready to let it play, right? I don't think there's anything else we need to do here. Uh, she has returned, and I did remember I wanted to work off some stress. I'll get rid of some of that stress that we have, because it was getting a little bit higher. Could have some issues there. And I think we're going to be doing a war with him to take some of his territory over here. Now, we don't want to do anything, though, until after we create that Imperial title. And we're saving up to do that. Uh, so, yeah, war is just too expensive for us to do that right now. And who knows what kind of events are going to pop up requiring us to pay. Like, for instance, you know, with this book that's being written. So, our beneficiary approaches us with her arms full of scrolls and manuscripts. My lord, there are so many areas that are worthy of attention, religion, education, not to mention the art of writing itself. So we can say this undertaking should serve God. She'll focus right on topics such as theology and prayers. Say, I want the book to be educational or at least entertaining. And she'll focus on writing on history and poetry. Or what does your muse yearn for? So she freely decides topic. And it's, uh, we're going to have a higher chance of having a good quality. So let's go with that option. And uh, we'll see what she makes. But we want the best bonuses possible, of course. We're able to sway him again. Excellent. Uh, so what we had intended to do after we were done swaying there is to go ahead and uh, romance her. Well, are we gonna well, we're gonna seduce her. That's what we're intending to do. 95% chance of success. Uh, we can go ahead and get rid of that then. All right, so we're gonna attempt to seduce her. We could have continued to improve opinion over here, get a little bit higher, I suppose. And he was not able to find any secrets here again. Yeah, we've been having trouble there for some time. Uh, we'll do it one more time. As you know, we left him there uh, a while back. We let him go through it a couple times, and he didn't find anything. I was hoping, since it's been about a decade since then, that maybe some new secrets might have come up here, but so far nothing. We'll let him go one more time. Remember, it's just a chance of him being successful. And not a very high chance either for finding secrets, from my understanding. It's really just based on his, you know, stats. Uh, he had, does have pretty good stats, but even with those stats, I think you're still looking at a fairly low percentage of finding uh, any secrets. I know that the, a lot of people think that you're, if you don't find any secrets, that indicates that there's none there, but that's not the case. Uh, there might be secrets there you're just not finding. Again, because it's just a percentage chance that you'll find them. So this is probably the last trade event for old Judas. Uh, remember, we want to... Uh, Try and get him into the church, Samber. Uh, we can't do that until we get our piety up to 350. So the last one here was stubborn, unless we change it. We could change it to vengeful or chaste. Hmm. Well, if we're wanting him to go to the church as well, and then go with Mieszko, which I kind of want to do, because we never found anything that would indicate that he is not our son. Some people think the red hair indicates that, uh, but the, the character we killed that was the father of Judas, I don't think he had red hair, and Judas doesn't have red hair, he has brown. Look at Samber, he's kinda got a blonde hair. We ourselves have brown hair. So I feel like, uh, you know, the, the red hair trait uh, can skip generations. Uh, doesn't her family have a lot of redheads in there? So, yeah, I mean, you can see her sister's redheaded, so it could come from her side of the family as well. Apparently, our wife is a drunkard. You see it on her face. Uh, but, yeah, I don't, I don't think we've found anything to indicate that Mieszko is not our son. And he's also named after us, so he could be Mieszko III. So I'm leaning towards making uh, Mieszko our heir take over for us. In which case, we want to try and get him into the church... What are the chances he'd accept? We don't have a hook or anything. It's only 18% right now. Again, being second in line for our primary title is, is uh, having an effect there. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm not sure if we'd be able to get him in there. But maybe if we get him another trait, like chased, then he might be willing to. So let's let's do that. We'll do uh, perhaps love is not for Judas, and uh, we'll see if that will make him more likely to go into the church. It does a lot more likely. All right, interesting. Yeah, he is very tempted to go into the church. I think we might be able to get him in. We have a better chance getting him in than his brother. So yeah, I think that's what we'll do, and then we'll probably just play as Miesko. And just hope he ends up being good, because remember, we don't have control of him. And I'm trying to get him the, having the best education as possible, so therefore he's got a guardian that has a very high intrigue and a decent learning. Would be much better than we would at teaching him. Uh, inspiration, a name to remember. Uh, so this is another uh, one of our beneficiary events. She approaches us with a thoughtful expression. Is there anyone special to you, my lord? She must read my irritation at such a personal question from my face because she continues. I mean, is there anyone you wish to dedicate your commissioned artifact to? It is turning out well, but a meaningful inscription would make it feel even more personal. So we could dedicate it to our lover or just say there is no need for dedication. That would also expose our, our secret here. Yeah, we're just going to say there is no need and get the prestige. All right, so getting uh, piety up. We should have it up here in a couple months. About three more months, we'll have enough uh, to try and get our, our son to the church and just see if it ends up working out all right. Uh, here's another event about the White Wolf. Uh, I thought these events did continue. Uh, so, my lord, this search of yours for a mere beast, I have to admit, it worries me. My Archbishop Flozy? That's an interesting name. He's Norse. Okay. Approaches me as I sift through reports of new sightings of the White Wolf. Evidently, anything that demands so much attention could be sent by Satan as if its existence is not a sign of the Lord himself. So we can say the wolf is a messenger for God. This is a learning challenge against him, but you must have a... Oh, well, he has a decent learning. I know our learning is pretty low, uh, but the chance that we have a... Or the fact that we have a 71% chance of being successful made me think that, you know, his was lower, but yeah, it's decent. Uh, but 71% chance that we're going to get uh, 100 piety, which we need more piety, or 28% chance we lose opinion with him. We could instead say it's none of your business, and then we'll just lose the opinion with them. Or we could say you're right, what I've been thinking, and we'll no longer hunt for the animal and gain 50 piety. Well, let's go with this one. 71% chance. That's not that bad. And uh, we gained 100 piety. Awesome. So that means I'm going to pause this here. Uh, this is an event about our attempt to seduce uh, Katerzynia. Kater something like that. Uh, so this is just something special to send her. We can acquire a specially rare book for her. Well, let's just take a look at her traits here. Shouldn't have high learning. She probably won't like that. A handkerchief with my crest on it. Okay, we can say a rose, a reminder of our first meeting. Uh, or perhaps not. Well, she already really likes us, so the rose might make sense. Yeah, I don't think the book would be good. Yeah, let's just go with the rose. See what happens here. And again, he wasn't able to find any secrets, so let's just say, very well, you know Bass, and we'll find somewhere else for him to look for secrets. Which I'm not entirely sure where we'll do that just yet. Maybe, maybe in his territory? Yeah, we'll do it in his territory. Is this the capital right here? It's this one right here. There we go. So look, uh, look for some secrets on his court. So now we have a piety requirement. Let's go and try and get one of our sons into the church. Remember, we have two choices here. Samber, you know, he already has the mastermind philosopher. Uh, so there's not really anything else that's going to change here to make him more likely to accept. Or less likely, for that matter. While when we look at Judas, it's a very different situation because he's doing the diplomacy education. Once he finishes that, he'll be less likely to go to the church. So it might just be better to try and do him first. And the reason why I'm thinking that is not only because, again, once he turns 16, he might be less likely when he gets a diplomacy education, but also because, remember, when we did this before, and we did the uh, the eldest son first, and then we did the younger son, then it did result in the younger son, so in this case Judas, being less likely to join because now they're the primary heir, or they're just set to get more titles. Uh, so his would actually decrease. So let's go ahead and ask him to take the vows now, old Prince Judas. 68% chance of success. We'll see how this goes. And uh, hopefully he accepts. Uh, she look, looks like she liked the rose. 
Yeah, we got the budding interest. Higher chance of success for that scheme. So she did like the rose. And uh, he agreed. All right, so Judas, who is not our true-born son, we know that his mother cheated on us with another man, is now prominent to the clergy and is no longer able to inherit, which does benefit his brothers. Probably not him much, but uh, certainly Miesco, if we were to leave both of them, he's now set to actually inherit two kingdoms, which would be Ruthenia, or maybe it's the White Rus. I didn't see that one. Let me just double check on that. Okay, so it's the right Rus one right here, and then our kingdom title there. Are the two he's set to inherit, but yeah, we definitely have to get rid of uh, one of them, I think. Get one of them into the church. And so the next one would be Samber, and we already know what his uh, percentage is, 55% chance here. Uh, now, if he refuses, there's a lot of different ways we can go with this. We could always arrest him, imprison him, and then try and force him into the church. 100% chance of success. The bad thing here is that you do take the uh, opinion penalty, the tyranny. So that's not good. So we'd prefer not to do it that way if we can avoid it. Uh, we do have 850. I think that's enough to make this imperial title, right? Uh, the Baltic Empire? That's not what it was called before. I meant to mention this at the beginning of the episode that we're actually playing on a new patch. The patch just came out, I think, yesterday or something like that. And so maybe they changed the name of this because I don't think it was Baltic Empire before, was it? I thought it said something else. Uh, but it says Baltic Empire now. Remember, we can always change it as well once we create it. Uh, but yeah, we can create this title, so let's go and do that. That'll make us into an emperor. Now we are mighty emperor. So a lot of uh, bonuses from becoming emperor. Uh, you can see that we now have another domain holding limit, so we can hold another county without any issues. Uh, we also, I think we might have different... Uh, bonuses here not different bonuses but you know increased grandeur yeah you can see that the baseline is higher again I think that's from being an emperor could be wrong we'll take a look here if there's any bonuses maybe not I'm not seeing any bonuses from being an emperor but you do have a higher required grandeur level from being an emperor you have to be sitting at level five rather than what the king has which is uh, king titles like two or three or something like that so we do have to keep grandeur higher now might want to do something to get up to level 7 because that's where the really good bonuses come from your, uh, your type of court. So with the diplomatic court, you get the counselor opinion plus 10. That's really nice to have. Uh, with the scholarly one, you get monthly lifestyle experience points. And I think that's for any lifestyle as well. Yeah, so that's a, a nice bonus too. Uh, yeah, this is where you get the really good bonuses. Uh, so we want to get it up to level 7. And uh, we're not that far from doing so. Should get up to level 6 soon. We'll let it naturally increase up. And then maybe we might change something up here. Because it doesn't look like we need much to get it up to, to level 7. So yeah, that would be an option. I suppose, you know, now that we have, uh, we don't have anything we have to purchase right now. Uh, we could always put some more people into our courtly positions. That'd be another way to do it. Alright, so now we're trying to get back up to 350 piety to get the next sun handled. Of course, that's our oldest. And the inspiration has been realized. So our beneficiary smiles and gestures me over with ink-stained hands. My book, my masterpiece is finished. Behold. So this is the book she created. It is a masterwork book. It's going to increase our prestige by 0.10 per month. And monthly learning lifestyle experience will be plus 10%. Well, that's interesting. All right. So, I mean, the prestige is helpful. I think this is only for the learning lifestyle, though, as it says. So that won't uh, help us out since we're not on that lifestyle. But, yeah, I mean, it's still helpful and you know, it's more prestige. I guess I would have preferred some other things. But uh, we do have an open position in our court uh, for that book. So it's going to get it placed now. There we go. Beautiful. So more prestige per month. Again, it's helpful. Now, if we were playing as, is it Samber? Yeah, if we were playing as Samber, then that would be helpful. And he's got a level 4 education trait too, so that's really nice to, to have there. Uh, but again, I just don't want to play as him because, for, for several different reasons. You know, the forgiving is, is difficult to have sometimes, so it's content. A lot of stress can be gained there. Getting penalties from the spinally as well. But yeah, we had always kind of intended to put him into the church. Hence why we had him do that learning education. So that, that's the plan, guys. Uh, he wants to pay homage to us. There's supposed to be new homage events as well, and more likely to get a gift. But you can see, we, we just got. 
Yeah, we'll take that money. And are we going to get more money? No, I, I think we just hadn't gotten it yet. All right, so we're going to go with this, getting us a uh, court grandeur, prestige, and more money. And our dynasty is going to get more renown. So now we're at level six on the court grandeur. Excellent. All right, so very nice. Moving along here. And we had a bastard born to our first lover here. So this has nothing to do with our uh, seduction event. And this is a young boy named Ivan. He is Russian Orthodox. So we can say, I must be careful about this and we'll keep the secret or the world will know of my child. I think we will uh, claim him. Yeah, we're gonna claim him. He'll still be a bastard, of course. That doesn't change anything. As you can see here. But with this, we did gain the trait Adulture. Which does have some, some penalties over here. But yeah, we admitted it. Because the whole point, purpose of this is to anger our wife. So. <laughs> Just trying to irritate her. So we're going to get some, some penalties there. In fact, it looks like we're a rival with our wife. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. We hate each other. Uh, so if anybody's acting against us, it's probably her. All right, so everybody knows about the fact that he's our child. He becomes part of our uh, dynasty, but of course he's a, uh, you know, still a bastard child, so he's not able to inherit anything unless you were to attempt to legitimize him. Oh, there it is, right there, legitimize bastard. So you can always legitimize him. We'll probably give him some titles once he gets old enough, unless we die before then. Uh, we did lose devotion, unfortunately. Yeah, that's a shame. We had just got that not that long ago. All right, well, with a holy war, we'll get some more devotion. So that's how we're going to make up for it. Yeah, we're finally an emperor. Uh, as far as the name goes, it's called the Baltic Empire right now. But yeah, there's no reason why we have to keep this named the Baltic Empire. Absolutely fine changing it. And we've already seen several name suggestions in the comments, but I did want to give everybody an opportunity to uh, suggest names for our empire. We could keep it as a Baltic Empire if you guys prefer, or we can name it something, uh, something else. So down in the comments below, post any name suggestions, and if uh, you know there's one that a lot of people like or just seems like a really good name, we'll go with that and, and change it up. As far as like changing the coat of arms and stuff, I don't know if we'll do all that. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. Uh, but we do have those options if we want to. Uh, but yeah, I think we might end up changing the name, because I know some, several people have uh, expressed a desire to do so. Uh, neighbors can be vassalized. Let's see where this guy's at. Well, he's over here in Italy. Is that where his titles are? No, he has a title right there on our borders. That's why it says neighboring. Did uh, they rebel? They did. It looks like they rebelled from the Holy Roman Empire. I don't know why he's in Italy right now, but uh, yeah. I don't see any reason not to bring him in, uh, though you got to do the low feudal obligations. That means you're going to have low taxes and low, be low levy contribution. It's the only, will only way he's willing to accept. We'll take a look at this character here. He's right up on the edge right there. All right, so he is not also not willing to do normal feudal obligations. And then we got a duke as well. Let's take a look at this duke here. Okay, so he has that territory and uh, four counties. And again, not willing to do the uh, normal feudal obligations. Now we do get a bonus from this because of the diplomatic court. You see we got a plus 27 bonus here. So I think that's a big reason why they're even willing to accept this. Yeah, we'll just go with uh, we'll go with this guy first. Cause I don't know if this is going to impact the other people's likeliness of accepting. So let's go and offer him vassalage. And yeah, it looks like we can offer anybody. Yeah, I wasn't sure if doing one would affect the other ones. So we'll just offer them all vassalage. Why not? And then uh, just increasing the size of our empire and, and going into the the Holy Roman Empire. It's territory now. Given this does result in these vassals not paying us much or giving us much levies, but we can always change those in the future, of course. All right, so we have increased the size of our empire. All right, so this is Judas here. He says, you're always there for me. I hope you know that I'm grateful. He approaches us in a rare display of appreciation. So we can get a weak hook on him or become closer to uh, forming a friendship. Hmm. How many weak hook on this character could be useful? I guess we'll do that. Never know how that might be of use. We don't really know what's going to end up happening to him in the church. He could end up being like a bishop or something. 
That's a real chance. Uh, now, with our other children, I wanted to see if there is any languages for them that they still need to study. Uh, that's right, he can't do any languages because he's got a guardian right now, so that's one of the negatives of him being under under a guardian. But again, we're really trying to get him a good uh, education trait. Uh, and as for him, why did we not teach him any languages? I guess it won't matter, though, if we asked him to take the vows here. But yeah, we could... Uh, let me just see, is there no options when they're not a kid anymore? Yeah, it looks like you can't do that anymore if they're not a child. Okay. I wasn't sure if you could have your adult children in languages. Looks like you can't. All right, well, good to know. So I think the next thing we're going to do is a war over here. Though I'm also, I guess we'll go through this vent, but I'm also tempted to do something over here with the Holy Roman Empire, particularly because he's clearly dealing with several rebellions. Uh, the celebrations had come to an end, and the evening's entertainment seemed to be over when Katarzyna suggested a reading. A clerk soon arrives, wondering what the guests would like to hear, and I see my chance to impress her. So we can say something pious, like City of God. Nothing to indicate that she's a very pious woman. She is very intelligent, so I had said that she wouldn't like uh, something in that last event because of her low learning, but maybe she would have just because she has the intelligent traits. Uh, but yeah, she didn't seem like the most pious person to me. We say, let's be entertained, travels to Byzantium, or spiritual medicine will give us a chance to learn. So this is an informative, that's a religion, and this is entertaining. Well, she's arbitrary, so who knows what she's going to like. Let's go with uh, the entertainment, travel to Byzantium. And she seemed to be completely engrossed. She said uh, it was a good choice, it gives us a warm smile. So now we got smoldering chemistry. We give her our, our sexy smolder. Oh yes, that's right. The Holy Roman Emperor. God, we got some loud vehicles outside, don't we? So this is Henry V, or Heinrich V, and he's dealing with three rebellions. He's almost won this one here. He has won this one here, essentially. Uh, so that's down here in Italy. That's like one of his smaller ones. That's probably why he's already most, almost won it. This one's also kind of a small one. So where's the, the big one? Is that one just started? Yeah, that's the main rebellion. He's dealing with a, a, one over his, his tyranny. Uh, but yeah, one option would be declare war. Oh, he's excommunic excommunicated as well. Okay, so that's interesting. Oh, we don't have him anymore. The guy who had the claim on Bohemia. Okay, so that's not really an option. Never mind. I was thinking he was still in our lands. He must have left. I did promise him that we'd do something, and that was a long time ago. Uh, so that's unfortunate. But again, could do like the uh, excommunication war if he wanted to, I suppose. Uh, but we're not going to. It would just oppose him and put uh, this character on, on the throne instead. Uh, I think we're going to attack over here. And uh, let's go ahead and do that now. So I'll declare war on him. It's going to be for the duchy. Uh, have we done... Oh, we can't do one for the kingdom. Uh, we don't have high enough devotion yet. So it'd have to be for a duchy. That one doesn't make sense. It's not on our borders. This one's too tiny. So we're going to go for the Lithuania one. Be 128 piety, so that's something to consider. Since we're trying to save up our piety, but we'll also likely get some piety from this war too. Okay, so yeah, we'll, we'll just go ahead and do this this conflict. He's actually got some military power here, 5,000 something men total. Uh, but yeah, it shouldn't be too difficult of a conflict. Oh, okay, wait a minute. We don't have enough piety yet. We're short by eight. All right, so we need to wait a couple months here. That's fine. Yeah, we'll just wait. No reason to take the penalties. Uh, court position is dead. So now we need to get somebody else in place. All right. Um, well, we can see if there's anybody that could fulfill the position right from our court that we already have here. We got Prince Samber, I suppose. It looks like he would be pretty good at it. But we're going to have him go to the church, and uh, he might be less likely to do so if he's got a job already. So let's not do that, especially when we have so many other... Uh, characters over here who could fulfill it adequately. Let's just do. I don't know. We could do. Oh, okay. She's our uh, the woman that we're attempting to romance here. Could do her. See if there's any other options that you might want to put her in. I can't really think of anything. Yeah, we'll, we'll put her in the court tutor. Why not? So she has a reason to be at court. All right. Excellent. So now we're romancing our, our court tutor. All right, so wait a couple months here. It looks like we already have the piety right there. 
and we were able to uncover a secret over here from this handsome man and uh, we're gonna blackmail him though are we already blackmailing or something no we're not to send anything off okay so yeah we can't do that for whatever reason do we already have something on him we don't have anything on him I'm not entirely sure why we can't all right we'll keep him there looking for secrets also, it looks like we have a court event here. Oh, okay. Just her unhappy that we gave her a position instead of her. Okay, well, I don't know who this woman is. Is she the one who wrote the book? Maybe. We just go with that option. We'll point her as the cupbearer. Or make her a court jester. Yeah, we'll just say this one. Alright, so we'll give it like a month here. I know that we're going in the winter, but that's okay. I don't affect them too. I suppose we could wait until after winter. It's not really any rush here, honestly. It's not like... I mean, given they could be attacked by somebody else, I suppose. I don't know what all our wife's been doing. Uh, she's losing a war right now. Okay, so that's the one over in Norway. I guess she's still involved in that. Wasn't that like a long time ago that we first saw that? So this is from the, the Knights Templar. Uh, looks like they're wanting another barony. We can get a huge chunk of money if we grant it to them. And I know we get them one one uh, barony already, but I don't see any reason not to give them another one. I guess this is the question of which one do we want to give them. Got this one over here. And that would be right next to that guy's capital. Interesting choice, I suppose. Or you can do this one here. And it doesn't look like there's really much there, honestly. Just that city holding right now. So yeah, you could grant them that. Or you can grant them this one here. I suppose we'll give them the barony right there on the uh, the border. It's going to get us more money. Let's see if there's anything else that uh, affects us. He would just be more happy with this one as well. So yeah, we'll do that one. Why not? It's a huge chunk of money that we can now spend. And, uh, of course, the moment we get a heavy pouch, somebody contacts us and uh, wants to help us spend it. In this case, it's our steward. I saunter between the market stalls of Krakow, a heavy pouch tugging at my belt. How do I make this coin work for me? As I admire the wares of the local sculptor, Catholic imagery, a sound investment, my steward suddenly appears at my side. A word of advice, my liege. Have a look at the jeweler's stall over there. Their wares might be simple, but their potential is great. So we can invest in a sculptor's workshop. We'll lose 60 gold. And we'll get more piety per month. While Krakow will get uh, more taxes for 30 years. Yeah, these are 30-year bonuses. That's nice for only 60 gold. Instead, you can invest in a jeweler's workshop. Lose 60 gold. Uh, the Duke becomes our friend. Well, that would be helpful to have. I know he's getting older and up there, but I mean, he already really likes us because of those titles we gave him. Yeah, I suppose that's helpful. Then you get the Great Jewelers Workshop Investment. That's an increase of prestige instead of piety. And then we get uh, much more taxes. But it's only a 75% chance rather than the sure thing that you get here. Or you can just turn a quick profit for 30 gold. Hmm. 75% chance, that's not bad, but it's a 25% chance you get nothing here. And these are great bonuses. We do need more piety. So yeah, I mean, getting more piety would be helpful, I suppose. But yeah, these are some great bonuses. 20% to holding taxes in Krakow. And more prestige is always helpful, too. But yeah, I don't like that uh, you're giving up a sure thing. So let's go with this one, guys. Just make sure that we get something out of it. I'd be really disappointed if we got that 25% chance there. Which probably is what would happen, knowing this game. Uh, we got to spend that money. Uh, let's go and get a perk first. Uh, we're going to do the detailed ledgers. I want to see how much that impacts it. Right now we're earning 26.6 uh, .6 per month. Now we're up to 26.9. So, so little difference there. Not much at all, honestly. So we already know what we want to get. We're going to be working on duchy buildings. Though, here's the thing, guys. Some people were wondering why I was interested in uh, this here. Oh, is it, did the duchy name change? Well, that's interesting. It's now called the Duchy of Opalania. 
So there's no more lower or upper Silesia. Okay, so they changed it, maybe because it was confusing. Now this is just Silesia instead of lower Silesia, and this, instead of being upper Silesia, is Opalania. Op Opalania, something like that. That's interesting. I mean, all the names are changed, aren't they? Yeah, all the duchy names are changed. This says Vistulania. Maybe that changed when we became a Baltic Empire then. Because, yeah, I don't think they would have changed all that. I mean, maybe not, but... They could have changed it in the patch. I'm not entirely sure, but maybe it changed when we become an empire. Uh, let me know down in the comments, because I'm curious uh, why all the names change. Is this a patch edition or something else? Uh, or, or just part of the uh, empire title being created. But what I want to do is make this into our core, one of our core duchies here, because three of the counties that we've been building in, out of the four counties that we build in, are in this duchy here. So we can create the title anytime we want, but I'm not sure that we have the, let me double check on this. I want to say we don't have the duchy building. Yeah, the duchy building is right there. So that's why I kind of want to take this. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that he wasn't under him anymore. He must have lost that. He used to have control. Okay, he does have one county here, but I thought he had two counties here. Apparently he only has one. Okay, I thought he had two, and it's not even directly under him. And right, I probably should check that. All right, so this is the guy. Uh, he has the, the duchy title here, so I really want to take that rather than have this one here that we build in. And, and instead have this be our main uh, duchy title. We also need to gain more territory here. Uh, we only have one of the counties in our main duchy. Uh, so that's a, a shame because it's a big duchy too. So I'd like to get control over more of this territory as well. We gotta arrest them and, and take their titles or something. Or cause them to, to rebel against you. That's something I'd really like to do. So we might not build... I mean, we could build it here, and even if we give it up, then I guess you're still getting the bonus for a little while. So maybe just some money. I can get some uh, tax offices for the 10% bonus there, just for something kind of safe that benefits you immediately. Yeah, I think that's what we might do, is just get the tax offices. Of course, uh, leisure palaces are nice to have, too. Increased monthly prestige, uh, stress loss, you have a higher scheme chance uh, of success in both hostile and personal schemes. So yeah, good bonuses there as well. Yeah, let's just go with the tax offices, the 10% gold. Because this will benefit us even if we give up this territory because, you know, our vassal will get the 10% bonus and that'll help a little bit. We'll get a little small percentage of it. So I think that's what we'll do since I think we'll end up giving up this, this duchy title eventually uh, in favor of this one over here once we get it. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get this one. It's going to take a while before they get this built, two years. It'll be a nice 10% bonus in uh, all these counties here, which we have, you know, most of the counties in that duchy, I think, if not all of them already. I'm not entirely sure. Looks like we are missing two of them, perhaps? Yeah, maybe two, two of the counties there. All right, so I think we're ready to declare war, aren't we? Oh, we're waiting until the winter ends, until the snow melts, which should happen here very soon. Uh, under the Breach. So, as the shadows lengthen, I find Katarzyna in the darkness between the castle wall waiting for me. She comes towards me, hesitantly at first, then eagerly. I hear her breath quicken as I pull her close. In the shade of the wall, we make love, the guard patrolling above, oblivious to our passion. All right, so we can say, once more, she'll become our lover. Or you say, after taking the castle, I withdraw. Hey, yeah, why not? Once more. So we'll have uh, multiple lovers here. Uh, she's a known criminal. Oh, fornicating. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Uh, we did finish up increasing the control over here, I think. So now we need to have him do the neighboring county. Uh, how are we looking on those factions? They're just not powerful enough. We got an independence faction now. It's got a duke on board. Is that the duke that just agreed to become our vassal? That's kind of strange. Now he wants independence. All right, I'm not entirely sure what the reasoning for that is, but uh, let's go and declare war here. And remember, we're going for the the duchy, the Lithuanian one. All right, excellent. Let's go and get our troops. 
raised up again. Shouldn't be too challenging of war. I don't think we'll need to call in anybody. I did want to see what the uh, limits here. They're all pretty low no matter where you go, but I guess we'll put them right here. So let's go ahead and raise up the armies. Oops, I didn't mean to raise them like that. Damn it. All right, well, it's too late now. We'll just go ahead and move them over here, get them all in the same location. And, and the reason why they raise like that is to try and fit all into the area and not take any attrition. Uh, we were not able to uncover anything, but we're going to have him do it one more time. Uh, he called somebody else in, which we already expected him to do. That's his ally right there. And together they only have the 5,000 men, so not too worried about it. Their cousin was killed in a siege. All right, so let's go ahead and merge all these guys under one army. Uh, we actually have a lot more troops than I thought we had. Uh, so yeah, we don't need anywhere near this number here. Nope, didn't want to split that in half. We're going to go ahead and split off. Uh, we'll split off a siege army. Of my, like, I don't know. These will be like fairly large, so the enemy fears it and doesn't attack it. Maybe like 2,500 or so. Probably a good number, I think. And try and see if we have any siege commanders. Yeah, we have one here. So we want to go after the capitals with this army here. Now with this one, we'll probably do another siege army, honestly. Maybe a little bit larger. So they might be further away from our main army. So do like 3,000 on this one. See if we have another siege commander. Might not. Yeah, it might be all we got here. All right, so no other siege commanders, unfortunately. So we'll just put... Let me see who we got leading here. So this count, he's pretty good. He's the best we got, so we'll leave him there. Uh, and then we'll just have the uh, other army led by this guy, the Duke. All right, so we still have 7,000 men. Uh, probably a bit more than we need, and we're, we're losing a lot of money. So let's just get rid of some of these. Let's get rid of like... Maybe like a thousand men. Yeah, I think we'll get rid of like a thousand. Somewhere around there, so... And just disband them. Uh, I can't disband them right now, because we got too many troops. Or uh, enemy troops, excuse me. Alright, and then this three thousand is going to be coming up this way. Oh, uh, we got to cross that board, don't we? And then this army here, we're going to attempt to engage these guys. If we can. Huh. What happened to her? Oh, she was pregnant. We've been overwhelmed by stress, unfortunately. Do we have any way to, like, get rid of some stress, like, right now? I don't think so. It looks like we're going to have a stress event, which will be our first one... For this character. So let's we'll see what happens there. I assume we'll get some negative trade or something though. Right in the middle of a war. So mental break. Wanton desires. Lately feels like I'm constantly being distracted by lascivious thoughts and erotic fantasies. With all the hardships of my everyday life, it is all too easy to lose myself in daydreams and forget about reality. These desires are clearly interfering with my life. Well, what should I do about them? So we say the old commandments will help me stay here. And uh, we're going to convert to Jewish faith. And uh, we'll spend 250 piety, lose some devotion, lose a lot of stress. You say, a good workout will burn these desires away. Yeah, I'll probably do that one. Or I will bite my lip and try to stay focused. Yeah, we'll do this one, guys. Should get us under there, uh, the stress limit. Well, it's nice having that, that trait. All right, so let's see if we can't find somewhere to battle these guys. You know, even if it's bad defense, it's... It's okay. We've got a good enough size army here that I'm not too worried about it. Uh, so these guys could probably disband now. No, still can't. Too far. Or, or still too close, I mean. We'll go all the way over there. Should be able to span them right there. Alright, so let's have this guy start moving over towards here. And I'm going to see if I can't catch him there. Looks like we cannot. He's further away. We'll just keep chasing him down then. And it looks like Heinrich V has won his war. One of those rebellions that he was facing. Yeah, not going to catch him there. And if we go here, we'll take a bit of attrition. 336 men lost. Don't really want to chase him all the way down up there, guys. There's no guarantee we'll catch him. 
And besides, they can't do anything. They have to come after us anyways. So might as well, like, make them come chase us. Now, of course, one issue is the uh, lack of supplies through here. There's really nowhere to go. Uh, all you can really do is split up your army. That's the only real way to, to deal with this here. Alright, so yeah, we'll just have to split it up, guys. Since, uh, you know, we're just going to focus on the sieges for now. I don't really feel like chasing them down. So let's go ahead and split off, you know, 2,000 men or so. I should be able to fit in these counties with their low supply. So put him over here. And then we'll go ahead and get one more army split off here. Actually, you might need to split off a couple times. Uh, two more times, probably. Oh, Lord. These are all, like, small. Oops. They're all, like, small levees. Yeah, very tiny levees here. <laughs> so it's going to take forever to get this added up. To, uh... Maybe one less here. There we go. Put him over here. And then even then, you're still going to be sitting over this. This limit here, no matter where you go, so even now you still gotta split off another army over here. So yeah, we're trying to get it up to, or down, I should say, down to 2,000. I think we just put some uh, men-at-arms in here. Or we put knights in there now. Oh, okay, so our men-at-arms, that's all we have left in here. Yep, that's all we got left, and that puts us at the uh, 2,200. Okay, well that's fine. Let's get this army and move them... Over here. Alright, so not a very large army, that one. It's kind of splitting them up. Again, it's a pain in the butt, you gotta do this. Let's move over here. And maybe we can get them to engage us. That's a chance. He's going up around this way. I'm just gonna bring these guys in here, and this guy into here. And we'll see if we can't catch him. And now he's going up around that way. Okay. Actually, you know what? We'll have him go over here. Him go over here. And we won't leave any commanders here. But I think we should be able to... Well, maybe not. Now they're going this way. Alright, so now we want to put everybody into this. And see if we can get, can't get them engaged. They're going after uh, their capital here, which we just sieged and took. Yeah, it looks like we can get out of here. Alright, so yeah, let's we'll go over this way then. I mean, you might be able to get them to attack you there. It is going to be across a river. It's probably better just throw all our troops into this, but I'm worried that they won't come if I throw everybody in here. Let's just see if that's what they do. Yeah, they did stop. Damn it. Alright, I was afraid of that. All right, we can try and chase them down. So, again, not able to find any secrets there, so I think it is time uh, to go ahead and move him somewhere else. Let's have him go after secrets. Probably over in his territory. So his capital's right there. So now let's go and find some secrets over here. Maybe he's got something. Remember, we're looking for him to cheat on our uh, daughter. I mean, they're not really cheating, so to speak, because they're not yet married, but they're betrothed. So this is probably going to be a win, I think. Yeah, I think we should get a win here. And do we want... Oh, one issue here, though, is the different commanders. He would not be the one commanding. Instead, you'd have this guy in charge. And he is just not as good as our character over here is with his 32 commander advantage. Also, you're reducing the enemy defensive advantage here. So maybe we want to not attack just yet until he's about to get into it. Maybe we won't be able to engage him if I do it this way, but could also have just changed up our commanders, of course. Just make sure he goes first. He'll get there in 11 days and then take all the rest and put him over there. I don't know if this will mess anything up. Nope, look like we're good to go. He'll be there first. 
All right, excellent. So we'll get everybody over there. Make sure he's going as well. And this should be a good win here. Yeah, they do have the defensive buildings. They do have the, the defending the forest. I think we'll be all right. Uh, so we finished converting in Mecklenburg. All right, excellent. Also, that faction has disbanded. So do we have anywhere else to convert? Let me just take a look if all of our territory is Catholic. Uh, we already did Brandenburg, of course. I think all the territory we directly manage is Catholic, but I'd be willing to bet that there's somewhere that still needs to be converted in our empire. Uh, over here, that new territory that we took. Also, all this is Orthodox. They got that territory, too. Uh, but let's do Berlin first. Let's convert on that direction, and that side, I should say. Um, huh. Oh, shoot, I never moved him over to start the siege. My bad, I put him in the wrong province. Okay, so he should have been doing that siege over there. I didn't realize that uh, he wasn't doing it. All right, so our wife is in some conflict that she's now calling us into. we got to accept, obviously, because we don't want to lose the fame, but I'm curious what it's about. It's on the kingdom of Ruthenia, so we might actually have to help in this conflict if she's you know slated to lose it. So we'll accept, and uh, maybe we'll we'll help her out. We'll see what happens. Obviously, we have our own war. we got to finish up first. Should win this battle. We'll likely be kind of costly. I think we're going to lose like a 1,000 men or something like that. I guess we'll see how bad it was. Yeah, we lost 1138. Uh, only killed 1951. We no longer have like a great commander or anything. Uh, we did get devotion from this. Got some war score. We're now at uh, 52%. Awesome. Take a look how our knights did in the conflict. All right, so that count did pretty good. 48 kills there. Let's take a look at the events. Killed one of their knights as well as he was retreating from battle. And uh, Prince Daniel, our brother, has wounded this character. And we captured somebody, the chieftain here. All right, excellent. So now we have our army of 8,000 here. We'll leave one there to do the siege while the rest, I guess, go chase them down or whatever. Uh, just taking a look at their army sizes here, just seeing how things are going. She definitely looks vastly outnumbered, and I think a big part of that is because I believe her troops are, yeah, they're over here. They're helping in Norway. So they got to make their way back over here, but even then, they're still very much outnumbered. So I assume they'll go after her capital. Now, one thing I want to do is probably try and get this war finished before we help out over there. I think that would make sense. Also, we got another winter coming up as well, and I believe we're pretty low on, on supplies right now. Let's go ahead and get this army here moving out of here. With, uh, you know, we're probably going to want to take all these troops. Yeah, we'll probably want to get all these guys here. Get them moving just over here for now. And we'll split them up. And then do that siege and this siege, and we'll see how that ends up going. Uh, as far as the war score goes. We don't have enough piety right now. To ask Samber to, to go to the church. Not yet. Let's see if he's still sitting at the same 55 percentage, though. He might be. Yeah, still sitting at 55%. He's growing a beard now as well. And I also want to see if uh, Miyashko got any new traits. He did not. He doesn't have any additional traits just yet. He's 11 years old. Uh, the, the worst thing, though, is is that he's going to have some serious penalties because because we had him under another guardian. We are never able to teach him the German language here, nor will we be able to. Now, maybe he'll be able to do it on his own if we give him some titles, though, which I assume we would give him some titles. So yeah, maybe he'll teach himself the German language. Uh, we'll have to see. But yeah, this is actually going to have to be the end of this episode, unfortunately. Uh, we'll finish up this conflict over here next episode. And then we'll uh, help out our wife in her war. does look like there are quite a few troops here. So yeah, we definitely are going to have to assist her in that. Uh, we might be able to disband some more of our troops. In fact, I never did disband this army here. I meant to do it a long time ago. Uh, but yeah, that will reduce our cost by a bit. Kind of save us a little bit of money here. Uh, but yeah, I don't think we need those for the conflict. Uh, but yeah, we'll uh, finish this up, and then we'll, we'll come over here and, and help her out. We're at 52% right now on uh, getting that war finished up. And uh, just one more son to disinherit. Old Samber here. And then uh, Mieszko will be our sole heir, and we'll be getting uh, all four kingdoms. He'll be inheriting the two kingdoms of his mother and the two kingdoms of his father, as well as the imperial title. He'll be quite the powerful lord, and essentially will be ruling all the way across here. Now, I did mention changing the, the name here. 
when you guys uh, providing suggestions. Uh, one interesting suggestion was the idea of like the Polish Ruthenian Empire, uh, or, or maybe in the you could say like the Polish Russian Empire or something like that, or Polish Rus, uh, Rus Empire or something. Uh, so yeah, a lot of options we could do. I heard a few other interesting ones too. But let me know down in the comments what you think, what we should name our empire, or if we should just keep it as is the Baltic Empire. I do hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you on the next episode where I guess we'll be doing this event here, a spectacular courtier. That has to do with a Samber, as well as that Flossie, the Patriarch. So yeah, we'll see what that's about. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you on that episode, and thanks for watching.